but you see our original integral and we are going to call it, um, let's put a nicely drawn Psi right here, our original integral Psi. Oh. What the fuck are you? Good morning fellow mathematicians, once again it's time for Oh yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Papa's back with a spicy boy. This bitch boy right here. Improper integral 0 to infinity. Lambert w of 1 over x squared dx. Well, that looks weird. It looks fucking weird. So we really don't know how to deal with Lambert of anything else than a single variable, u for example. So why not let this argument right here be equal to u? U, not U. U is determined one to you. You are my son or my daughter. You are awesome. I'm going to choose U as a new variable. So, <laughs> let U be equal to 1 over x squared. Well, if we differentiate that, we are going to end up with du being equal to, well, this is negative 2 over x to the third power dx. And you know, 1 over x squared is nothing but u, and 1 over x is nothing but square root of u, so we can actually rewrite this right hand side as negative 2 times u times u to the 1 half power dx. Well, and now we can divide both sides by this right here, and I'm going to leave it like it is right here for reasons that will become obvious in a minute. So let's divide both sides by this stuff right here to end up with an expression for our dx with dx being equal to negative 1 over 2 times u, u to the 1 half power du. And now we can plug all of this stuff into our integral and see what we get right now. So we have um, 1 half, negative 1 half, we can bring it to the outside, it's just a constant. Integral running from, well, if x approaches 0, u tends to infinity, and if x approaches infinity, u tends to 0. So we got rid of this up and lower bound stuff and also we have Lambert W of u over u, u to the one half power, integrated with respect to u. Just plugging all of this stuff into here. And also you see we have this negative sign right here while distributing this into our integral sign. We can just change the up and lower bounds. This one infinity and it's right here zero. Okay, now we are going to run into little problems because we have Lambert w of u and we have this u right here integrated with respect to u so this is really quite weird and I don't blame you guys if you have no idea how to integrate something like this but let's try to do this intuitively so we know what Lambert w of u actually is so let's see if we have a certain function, f of x being equal to x times e to the x. Well, if this stuff is bijective and stuff like this, blah, 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 we can introduce an inverse function, Lambert w of u, namely. So if we plug this inverse function into our function itself, on the one hand, we are going to end up with our argument itself. So inverse function on function is just argument itself. And on the other hand, we have to plug this Lambert w of u into this x times e to the x into here. So we have Lambert of u, e to the Lambert of u, and 12. The good thing is now we've got an expression for our u right here, but we also have our du, so we are integrating with respect to u. So how can we get that? Well, just making a simple change of variable you could say, just like with our regular substitution right here. So let's differentiate this side with respect to u, and here's going to be the mindfuck. Let's differentiate this side right here with respect to Lambert w of u. Just recall this function right here, t for example, or just uh, let's say we have this w right here. Let's recall it like that. And you are going to see it's just like our regular substitution right here, just differentiating stuff. So. Differentiating this side right here, we end up with du being equal to, well, now we have to use the product rule right here. So at first, this part is going to vanish, so e to the Lambert of u, and then plus, well, Lambert of u, times the differential of this thing with respect to Lambert w of u is just e to the Lambert w of u. 
just like you would differentiate e to the x with respect to x, you are just going to end up with the thing itself. <laughs> and now we can just, um, don't forget your differential, d lambert of u, <laughs> putting this in parentheses, and now you can just factor out this e to the lambert w of u, and then we can plug all of this stuff into here. So this last uh, probably was fucking weird for most of you guys, but I hope you saw where all of this came from. I plugged everything in, put this stuff here once again so that we can um, conclude what we did. So our du is nothing but this stuff right here, put it here, and also our u, that's why I put it that way for um, factoring out purposes. Our u is nothing but this expression, I put it here, so you can also write square root of this stuff. Now we have to talk about the upper and lower bounds. Well, no need to worry about that, because if u is zero, well, we have a product right here, and this can only be zero if one of the parts is zero, so e won't go to zero, we don't have negative infinity right here, so our Lambert of u has to be zero, so that's lower bound, and for our upper bound, u only tends to infinity if Lambert goes to infinity, I hope you can see where this came from. So, upper and lower bounds stay as they are, and what else do we have? Well, we have those factors right here. This is going to cancel out. And also we have this Lambert W right here. This is going to cancel out. And we are now going to end up with a way nicer expression. So we have one half integral from zero to infinity. One plus Lambert over Lambert e to the Lambert. <laughs> I'm just going to refer to this thing right here as Lambert because Lambert W of U is just weird to say. That's a fucking mouthful. D Lambert. Okay, coolio, and you see we have an addition in the numerator, so we can break this up into two integrals, and they are just going to be one half times, let's put brackets right here, one half times integral running from zero to infinity. Now we have one over this chunk right here, and also I forgot the square root, I'm terribly sorry. Okay, so that means we have Lambert to the negative one half power, times e to the, well, using the power property, so we have negative um, Lambert over 2. So this is our power, looking quite weird. d Lambert of u, and also we have the second part, so positive integral running from 0 to infinity of, now we have Lambert over this chunk right here, so you see if you would just advance this fraction by um, yeah, by our square root of Lambert, you would just end up with a square root of Lambert up here. So that means we end up with Lambert to the one half power, e to the same stuff, same spiel right here, negative Lambert over two, d Lambert of u, closing the brackets off. That's a lot to write, I still have to think about it while dealing with this and we are going to give this bad boys a new name. We can also distribute this one half into everything, so let's put it here. We are going to refer to this thing right here as i, as integral, like integral, and this thing right here is j, like Jens, the mathematical uh, meme boy. And we are going to solve this right here and this right here and trust me on that, it's not going to be bad. It's it's really quite easy, isn't it? Let's go ahead. So, like I said, this isn't even half bad, it's really quite easy. So we just want to introduce some sub substitutions to and its miserable life. Um, if you take a closer look, you can also make use of the um, gamma function right here to end up with something nice. I have derived the gamma function before, maybe you find a link in the description, maybe I forget about it. Never mind, we are just going to introduce substitutions and then this thing is basically going to vanish. So it would be nice to get rid of this negative one half power right here. So introducing something with squared for example. And also we would like to get rid of this weird exponent up here. So let's take this thing as a substitution. So let Lambert of u over 2 be equal to something squared, for example t squared, just to get rid of this negative one half power right here. I hope you can see where this came from, because if we just take the negative one half power on both sides, 
we are going to end up with, well, this is just t to the negative one after that. And this thing right here is Lambert over two to the negative one half power. And now we can just multiply both sides by, yeah, by one over square root of two. That means one over square root of two t to the negative one power is equal to Lambert to the negative one half power. I hope you can see where this came from, so that's quite easy. And also we can differentiate this thing right here. And don't forget, Lambert is just a separate variable. For example, call it omega. I really don't care. So we end up with d Lambert over two being equal to two times t dt. And you see the good thing is we have, we have this one half here and this d Lambert and well, this is just this term right here. So we can just substitute this thing in for this right here. Also you see our upper and lower bounds wouldn't change so they stay as they are. That's quite good. So we have an integral from zero to infinity. What else do we have? Well, now we have this one over square root of two t to the negative one or one over t, I really don't care how you write it. And also we have this e to the negative t squared times this chunk, two times t dt. And you see, two over square root of two, we can advance this by square root of two over square root of two, so this is just one. And this is going to result in just square root of two, which we can bring to the outside. And also this one over t and this t is going to cancel out to one, you could say. So. Now we end up with square root of two integral from zero to infinity e to the negative t squared integrated with respect to t. And by our last random week or Papa Flemmy's integral week, I, I really don't remember this thing as a matter of fact is going to evaluate to square root of pi over two. Coolio. And now we can just bring this together. So those square roots right here and we are going to end up with square root of two times pi over two in the process. This has been our first one, our Papa I. And now we are going to deal with Jens, the mathematical mean guy. And well, we have the same arguments as before, you could say for introducing the substitution. So we have this one half power right here. We would like to get rid of it. And also we want to substitute this right here. So it's going to result basically in the same thing. There's not much we have to um, do differently only this right here. So you see, we are just going to use the one half power this time. So that means we just have to multiply by square root of two in the process. So this is what we have to change basically. So this thing is going to end up with, and also this is just the same as before. So we have an integral zero to infinity. This chunk is nothing but um, two times t dt. And we have this e to the negative t squared. And we also have t right now. So I have to get rid of this right here. I'm terribly sorry. We have this chunk right here. Square root of two times t. And we can just bring those two to the outside. They are multiplicative, that's fine. And also bring those t's together right here. And once again, you could just use the gamma function on this. So you can also do this. So we end up with two times square root of two. That's an ugly square root. Integral from zero to infinity of t squared e to the negative t squared dt. And whew, how can we do this? Well, watch my video on the um, hypervolume integral or we can just do integration by parts on this one right here. So let's do this. So we need something to differentiate, something to integrate plus minus. So why not differentiate t right here? And why not integrate t times e to the negative t squared? And this thing actually allows for an elementary um, antiderivative. So t differentiated is just one. And this thing right here, what exactly is that? Let's put it here. So we integrate t e to the negative t squared integrated with respect to t. Let's introduce a substitution. So let um, t squared be equal to, we are going to be fucking badass and we are going to use lambda in this case. That also means that d lambda is nothing but two times t dt. And now we can divide both sides by two, by the piano axioms is not equal to zero. Um, it's not the least element. <laughs> so you see this t times dt is nothing but this right here. Bring the one half to the outside. We end up with this chunk, um, this d lambda, and we have e to the lambda, negative lambda in this case, 
integrating this is really quite easy. Negative e to the negative lambda over 2. But what is lambda? Lambda is nothing but t squared. So that's basically it for this one. So we know what the antiderivative is. It's nothing but negative e to the negative t squared over 2. And now we can just multiply this together. Use the upper and lower bounds on this and then take the integral of this thing right here. And I hope you notice that negative and negative sign are going to cancel out to a positive sign. So we are going to end up with 2 times square root of 2. Let's use brackets on this one right here. So at first we have t times e to the negative t squared over 2 from 0 to infinity. And now we have this integral right here. Positive. We have this one half. We can bring it to the outside using the linearity of the integral from 0 to infinity. e to the negative t squared integrated with respect to t. And you see this chunk right here is the same as before. Square root of pi over 2. So that's nice. So this is just going to end up with um, square root of pi over 4. And also we have this chunk right here. You see obviously if we plug in the lower bound 0, this is just going to vanish because of this t right here. And if we plug in infinity, well our exponential function, 1 over exponential function, is going to grow way, 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 way faster than t right here. You can just use L'Hopital to show that this is indeed true. So overall, this stuff right here is going to vanish. This is just zero regarding the upper and lower bounds. And we are going to end up with, well, this. And that is going to cancel out. So this makes square root of 2 times pi over 2 once again. And I really don't have much space left. So that's the value of this integral right here. I'm terribly sorry for my bad chalk board um, work. But you see our original integral. And we are going to call it, um, let's put a nicely drawn psi right here. Our original integral psi is nothing but i plus yens. But this is nothing but square root 2 times pi over 2 plus square root 2 times pi over 2. Well, that's going to cancel out in the process. And we are just going to end up with 2 times pi, but the square root of that thing. And that's the value of our original integral. And then we are done! I hope you did enjoy this little video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. Please, please share Papa's videos everywhere. I hope the channel is going to get some more attention in the next time and I hope you did enjoy this video right here. If you want to support the channel a bit more by my stupid ass t-shirts I created right here or support me on Patreon. Anyways, I love you guys, appreciate you and up until the next video, have a... Let me see. Once again, physics journal day. See ya.